the story of my first time in Vietnam, why I went there, and what is happening now. I'm from Vancouver, BC, Canada, and in Vancouver, BC, Canada, it is tough for a musician to make it. Most bands just disband within the first year because of how everything's set up. You can't really play in uh, on the Granville Strip more than once a month. That's the good place to play. Uh, most places don't really pay you. Even if you work your balls off, they'll still fuck you out of out of a dollar. Um, I did it anyways, and I worked my balls off to get to the point where I'm at now. And I've gone through a lot of uh, band members because they just, you know, I don't, I don't blame them at all for not wanting to stick it through because it's a tough time, man. Um, I have the luxury of being the guitar player and singer, so it's a lot easier to do swap outs. And that was uh, that was that there, right? Um, one day. I decided, okay, I gotta get the fuck out of here. And I went over to Australia. I booked my own tour and it was pretty good. Um, came back over thinking things would have changed because you know now I've done an international tour, perhaps people will help me out more in Vancouver. No, no, no. Um, so that was that. And I was down. Um, I felt like dog shit. And I couldn't think of a, another way to get out other than book another tour somewhere else but I wanted help this time right so I put out a form letter which was looking for some kind of booker or manager anywhere in the world I used Craigslist Facebook LinkedIn I joined all these Facebook groups I, I did everything I possibly could and I did get responses and most of the time the responses were total bullshit rookie motherfuckers who were just trying to make a dollar or people who were not really interested in a mutual beneficial agreement. So one time I got a hold of this one guy through a posting in Thailand. Um, and he was from Vietnam. He was like, hey, do you want to come to Vietnam? I was just on Craigslist and I saw your thing in Thailand, but you know, Vietnam's rocking. And at this point in my life, I'm like, you know, I don't know shit about Vietnam. All my fucking knowledge of Vietnam comes from war movies and cartoons so like my the image in my brain is like some guys in sandals in a rice field with one of those big Raiden hats and sandals with rifles and Rambo okay so like that's that's all I fucking knew he says no this is the most rocking place in Asia right little did I know at the time that he was correct at the time at that time four years ago it was the most rocking place in Asia so I didn't know what to expect, no contract, no nothing. I'm expecting, like, you know, I get in the car with this guy, he's gonna like, chop off my fingers and send them back home to my family and try to get some money and then kill me anyways. But at this point, I figured it was worth it because my life at that point, to me, was absolutely fucking worthless. I was getting high all the time, I was drunk, getting drunk all the time, and I didn't have fuck all. And, you know, the, the clock on, the clock was going um, and I was 27 28 years old at that time and I I knew that if I didn't do something now that I would just be another old fart never was not even a has-been and that's just something that I wasn't cool with I would personally rather kill myself than be be that so I took a chance um, and it worked out I arrived on the first day, I had no sleep on the plane because, you know, there's some crying bitch of a baby and bitch parents that were just shit parents on the plane. Um, then I get to the airport. He picks me up. He booked me a shitty hotel. I stayed in the shitty hotel for three hours and couldn't sleep because my, my internal clock was all screwed up. Um, he picks me up and we go to the first gig, which was the vice prime minister or you know second in command guy whatever you want to call him his private party i wasn't sure if it was a birthday party or what most people did not speak english he paired me up with uh this guy named mima who was in vietnam's first heavy metal band called yavang means yellow skin and they're uh rocking dudes and most of them moved over to california but he stayed there and he played with me on my first tour um first tour of Vietnam and it was kick fucking ass 
lots of people there. I got paid really well. I got hammered and met a lot of girls. And we will keep this not PG, but you know, I just won't get into that part of it right now. Um, but I had a fantastic motherfucking time. And uh, you know, I ate weird things. I ate rats, which was like a delicacy at the time, apparently. And I was the guest of honor and, and things were fucking excellent. And I'd never really experienced that before being from a bar band guy in Vancouver, right? I played a New Year's Eve gig on that tour. I played several packed fucking places, right? They had this one place that was known as the rockin' place. Uh, and it's now totally lame. But back then, it was fucking, fucking rockin'. Packed places, okay? Like 200 to 500 people crammed into 100-seater venues. Like, they were like packed like sardines. I got the footage through my, through my YouTube if you wanna check it out. Um, and it was, it was killer. Absolutely fucking killer. And, and, you know, I would never be given that kind of opportunity in Vancouver, ever. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but I would never be given that opportunity. Then I went and played Thailand, did a solo show run, and it was okay. Uh, went to Japan, and it was okay um, on the first runs and stuff. Uh, went back to Vietnam, and I would do this circuit. Vietnam, Thailand, Japan. And I now book that circuit and I call it the Rock with the Beast Tour. It is uh, excellent. We are in our third season of it now. Um, and we will be going back to Japan for the fourth time once this virus is over and stuff. Um, but I've hit, a, I don't know, in, in, and in Thailand, that's where I'm at right now. Um, we've been doing really well, played all these different bars, became uh, staples in certain certain bars uh, we play regularly in these places I've uh, I'm cutting a a song with uh, Woo Records in in Bangkok and that's that's pretty excellent we've been invited to do these festivals and that would have been rocking if this virus thing didn't happen um, but it seems that aside from that which is great I've hit a bit of a glass ceiling I'm not going to really advance any further than that so it looks like we are going to now expand into Europe, Northern Europe, um, working with top artist promotion in Spain with the great Lorenzo. You're awesome, bro. Love you. Um, going to play in some big shows in Mexico, and I'm lining up some stuff in America. And that's some big shit that I would never have been able to score or been able to attain the skill set that I have without coming out, taking a huge freaking risk, N not knowing what's going to happen uh, for my career and most importantly, my life. But I did it anyways, and it paid off. So... I love you, Vietnam. Thank you very much for everything you've done. Uh, thank you so much, Thailand. Love you too. And Japan, you guys are excellent. And we will continue to see you. And it's just time for growth now. And it is time to expand and do some drastic, brash, motherfucking shit. Let's get crazy. So thank you very much for listening to this. If you liked it, leave a comment or press like or share or do whatever. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Um, if you want me to get into more depth about any of this, or if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to make another video. Just leave it in the comment section below. Or if you're friends with me on Facebook or Instagram, just send me, send me a message. And you can check out our website at uh, yetirocks.com. Check out our new single, Party Tonight in Valhalla, coming out real soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Rock on.